Hi, I'm chronicling my journey here with the DMC-122 Gemini Combo. I just got a new used one last month, including the Half Moon Switch. I've played a Nord Electro 3 for years, pretty much since it was the new and latest gizmo, and I always either wanted to get a second rig or preferably get a Nord that would split and play through another keyboard. I was planning to get an Electro 5 or 6, and then I was hesitant because they took away the Clavinet EQ switch modeling. I really love playing clav. I really love a uh, nicely modeled clav like the Nord had. And there was a lot of buzz in various online forums about this DMC-122 Gemini combo. It seems like a really awesome idea. It's a mini Hammond. Two 61 key manuals with 20 drawbars. All the percussion switches, an easy-to-use software editor, and assignable drawbars so you can edit effects and EQ on the fly using these drawbars as potentiometers when you run out of the six potentiometers already there. GSI is another arm of Krumar. It's a little company in Italy known for their fantastic sounding virtual B3. They are known now for the Mojo 61 and the Krumar 7, which are the 61 is a kind of all-purpose small electro style module, and the Krumar 7 is a sort of high-end electric piano. Both of those are much more like the Nord. They're out-of-the-box playable and editable. This is, you can play this out-of-the-box, but it requires a lot of homework to activate even a small part of its many, many parameters. But it also has the potential to be a much better gigging instrument. I'm totally new to MIDI, and this relies on a lot of MIDI programming. I've never done anything more complicated than plugging in MIDI cables into a controller that automatically controlled some parameter with no trouble. A lot of what I'm doing here should be pretty basic, though I'll hopefully know more later. And this tutorial should help those of you looking for some basic help on a Gemini DMC combo. And then at the end, I can say the questions I still have, and those of you who are more advanced can tell me what I should be doing. There are time jumps down at the bottom of the video to the different sounds, to my setup process, and to you know, just to hearing some playing at the end. All right, let's get started. So first you want to connect to the Gemini editor and boot up the DMC editor both. GSI made the DMC-122 first and then sold it as a MIDI controller, then created the Gemini as a kind of brain for it. So unfortunately, the controls are not integrated between the two. The Gemini editor is, weirdly enough, an IP address on a wireless network cast from the Gemini itself. You can see right here, you join it on your wireless. And then as soon as it comes up, you supposedly can just type Gemini into there, but every time I've had to type the, what, the IP address. There we go. It's a very odd way to do things. I wish they had gone with an app, if only for the convenience of being able to look up other stuff on wireless while working. But it is probably a lot cheaper to make than an app, and the whole DIY aspect of that appeals to me. Here's the home page of the editor. We've got the two DSPs for the different manuals. The lower manual is on channel 4. The upper manual is on channel 1. They explain why in the manual uh, that the B3 setup uses channels 2 and 3. So that's why you have channel 1 and channel 4. I mostly play funk and soul, which means I play a lot of Rhodes, Piano, Clav, Wurlitzer, and B3 with a little bit of Vox or Farfisa or Moog. So I won't get too much into the other sounds like the samples. If you go to gsidsp.com, they have samples of the different presets. So you see down here, they've got a list of presets under preset list. You can select sound under select sound, and you can look at the parameters. We'll look at the parameters here for my uh, main tone wheel organ setting. By clicking on edit engine, and the B3 has a lot of parameters. Besides the percussion, the chorus, 
the vibe and the draw bars. There's other things. There's settings like a key click and crosstalk leakage. When they have a number next to them, like the draw bars do, that means they've been assigned to a number in the MIDI map, which matches another number in the DMC editor for the draw bars. So you can see draw bar upper is assigned to CC12. We look in the DMC editor and we click on draw bar one, CC number 12. You can change that either in the MIDI map, in the Gemini editor, or you can change that in the DMC editor. So to assign something that is not assigned, you can give it a number in the MIDI map, usually matching whatever assignment is in the DMC editor. I'll show you here. You can get to the MIDI map either by pushing on one of these numbers and uh, pushing view MIDI CC map, or you can go back to the home page and hit view MIDI CC map. Now this gives you all the numbers where they've been assigned. You can see here, for instance, uh, where the draw bars are assigned. Here's VB3, the first, you can see all the draw bars are assigned to this range of draw bars from 12 to, what is this, uh, 29. And then the lower draw bars are assigned to 33 and 35. I wrote down everything from the DMC editor to make a little cheat sheet on paper so that I would not lose track of everything when I was moving it around in the MIDI map. This is all individual to the B3. So you'll see that, for instance, I was able to go to the synth down here and assign a lot of those same numbers, assign the same draw bars to the synth. Let's see. Yeah, here we go, virtual analog synth. So you can see 17 through 20. Those are the same draw bars that were assigned to the Hammond. Effects, though, are universal. If you assign a draw bar to turn on an effect in the MIDI map, it'll turn on for absolutely everything. I tried this at first. It's very confusing when you pull out a draw bar for the Hammond and you suddenly have your phaser on. So be careful what you assign effects to. And I'll go over that more when I talk about setup.